to gather together, especially on this topic that is important to everybody. But the first season of Bridges, Puentes, which is a series of talks, which we try to delve deeper into what being a, a dramaturg means in Mexico. What does that word mean to us and how do we put that in practice, into practice? Today is quite a privilege to share this space with these minds, brains, and hearts that have put so much into this, their knowledge and their experience into this series. We want to delve deeper into what dramaturgism is in Mexico and to put into practice everything that we've done in our country. And uh, I'm going to tell you not in a very light way everything that we have done, everything that these people have done, but I will try to give you a summary of it all. Our first participant is Marta Herrera Lasso. She has been a dramaturg, translator, a teacher, playwright, and researcher of theater in Mexico, Canada, in the United States. She is, comes from the uh, Teatro School of the UNAM, and she is also a teacher from the British Columbia University and has studied performance arts by the University of California, located in Berkeley. Thank you, Martha. Here I am. Ana Lola Santana is a teacher, theater teacher and performance teacher at the Spanish Department of Portuguese Department of Dartmouth College in the United States. The latest uh, book, Freak Performances, is focused in the use of uh, freaks as a political figure in performance in theater. She has worked as a, a translator and dramaturg in several theatrical productions and is part of the company Teatro de Ciertos Habitantes. Thank you, Ana Lola. Rafael Michel Modenes is a theater teacher and translator for the National Autonomous University of Mexico, the UNAM, as a scenic translator and dramaturg. He has published and taught and edited all sorts of talks in Shakespeare theater and translation and film in many places, including Cambridge, Oxford, Spain, France, Italy, Germany, Brazil, and Mexico, amongst others. He's a member of several committees that include the MIT Cambridge University Press and the University of Barcelona. He has translated over 45 plays for both uh, the scenes and for their uh, publication. Maria Lourdes Guzman Gonzalez is, uh, comes from the University of Psychology in uh, Dramaturgy at the Columbus yeah, University of Mexico. He has been a dramaturg from several places in 2015. And he is an assistant director and he is a person responsible of networks and dramaturgists for the Lasil Theater Company. She's part of the Congress of the Committees for LMDA 20 and 2021. And he she is the founder of the Mexico team, and she participated in, t in the colloquium of what the digital world has revealed for dramaturgy from Teatro Entre las Piedras and the dramaturgic rebellion of Huitamargo. From the scene in 2020, she participated in the conversation topic discovering research for scenic arts of the NTSAO 2020. Thank you, Lourdes. Gabriela Paricio, she's a dramaturg and a teacher from theater at the Autonomous University of Mexico. Since 2011, she promotes the work of dramaturgs. She has participated in summits in Chile, Guatemala, and Mexico. She's the winner of the field grant team for the LMDA, the expedition project in the search of the Mexican dramaturg. And she now teaches the uh, theatrical research uh, workshop for Teatralicity in Chile. In 2015, she's part of the Euteria Teatro Collective. Rocio Galicia, she's a dramaturg, a teacher, researcher at the National Center of Theatrical Research, Rodolfo Sili Center, in which she coordinates the, the research line uh, for uh, bodies. She is, has written on dramaturgy, in 2020, with her book called Casi Muerte, Casi Vida, Manifestations of Theater in the Mexican Border, and 
for 20, uh, 11 and 2018. She has been a teacher at several uh, workshops and for the scenic arts. She is a corner of the seminars and research groups centered in um, educated young researchers. Brenda Muñoz, she's a playwright, dramaturg, and a freelancer. She has an MBA in communications and writing for film uh, from uh, the Vancouver Film School. She currently resides in Mexico City and works with the LMDA as the Vice President of Mexico and Coordinator of the 2021 Congress. Thank you, Brenda, and thank you all for being part of this. I'm so excited. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the structure of today's conversation. Like any other talks we've had in Puentes, we try to have this conversation in the most uh, casual way possible. And we wanted to put into practice our dramaturg and our being and try to listen, you know, to exercise this listening skill. So we will have a series of questions. All of these will be directed to our participants and they will have five minutes to develop the answer. After that, one, a few of the participants will uh, can reply to that. This uh, means that that can be linked to what has been said or maybe that can show a complementary part of or maybe a, a view po point of view that is located from, that stems from a different position. So let's start. First question goes to Marta Herrera. So how points do I get? How many points do I get? Just two points. So Marta, is it possible to define uh, dramaturgism in, at least in Mexico? How would you define it? You have five minutes. You're the million dollar question. Well, uh, every time uh, somebody asks me this question, the first thing I tell them is that if you have no idea or have ever asked that about yourself, go to the LMDA website and read what dramaturgy is, you know, which is a list of uh, possible tasks so that you can, you know, get to know what it is all about. I actually read it often, which is something that I usually don't do, but I'm going to use as a prime as a participation that we had at, at Puentes or Bridges, which is a, because the question is infinite. So I told myself when we participated, and Alola, I and myself in a conversation at Puentes, we saw a few words and concepts that helped us in defining what dramaturgy is. We had the idea of developing the concept and the vision and a companionship um, effort that is uh, through the director of maybe a play or the collective creation. But sometimes the figure of this director tends to be a lonely one. The dramaturg uh, involves that part of establishing a dialogue, the trust one, whether some uh, ideas are correct or not, and providing this space to develop a vision. And then this dramaturg becomes the link or the middle person between this uh, concept and the rest of the teams or individuals within a project. So they become the, the um, purveyor of the, of the concept that is being developed. A person that helps in make the decision-making process. What happens during uh, uh, the performance, during organizing the performance. You usually have budgeting to think about, things that were not considered before, and sometimes this helps us in thinking, you know, we have to make the decisions, we have to delve deeper, and it helps us in making the decisions when we do the setup. We also thought of contextualizing things, you know, you are the person that is contextualizing things, you know, the bridge between the text, the context and the text what it means for this specific audience, what it means to do for this people, and what does it mean to do that at a festival or towards the future, or maybe we'll have a new season. What would that entail as well? What changes, what is kept the same? This constant conversation between text and context. And another thing that came up, it has to do less to do with how dramaturgism is 
conceived and how an actual dramaturg is and that is adaptability to be adaptable to processes to be adaptable to uh, work uh, team working teams to make something different out of a specific te text and that adaptability will allow us to make sure that the concept is realized to purvey the concept to help in the decision making process and contextualize the work that is being done i still have a minute to go okay you can you can end there i think that's it because what i wanted to say though is that when we were talking these three people here that day that was uh, the definition those are the points that cropped up why because when it comes to adaptability it has a lot to do with what process you're dealing with even if you're working within the same teams for every process it's like what you do with your partner every day is a new relationship right so it's the same thing in a way you have to understand that adaptability and the three people that were talking that day in this conversation having a dialogue on this there were several things that were happening within our processes as dramaturgs that led us to this conversation however if we were to have this conversation again the definitions might be different thank you marta now this is as i told you a sort of a game person who raises the, the hand will can reply to that don't raise uh, your hand because that's only a zoom thing right and we don't want to deal with that anymore so the first person to talk you said Marta, that if you were to have this conversation any other day the definition would have changed i believe that for Oh, it was a, a it was a nod. We were uh, we were okay with that. We're having this conversation again, and I'm sure that we will uh, again change the definition of dramaturgism and continue to expand it even. And a, a phrase that I read at the uh, one of uh, Gabriela Parisi's text was that the uh, dramaturg helps philosopher to structure their their ideas, and I do believe that in this process we do have a lot of philosophers people who are collaborating and i like what you're saying the dramaturg helps the philosopher in structuring their ideas and in a room filled with philosophers in which nobody understands each other it is important to have a person there that says okay let's stop let's uh, take a, a breather and uh, let's make a decision that is informed and i like that i want to continue to define that i would like to hear yet another definition if you were if you had five words to define dramaturgy what would you say so Ana Lola, i'm gonna put you on the spot sorry about that well i do believe that there is an infinite amount of words that can define that five is just too few for that and what Marta is saying, well, uh, it depends on whether the on what type of project you're working on. For me, this is something individual because I'm working with a company, and I believe through this that is the same. Every project requires something different from you, and I have to learn to be very flexible to understand that sometimes I, I am working with a musician. Sometimes I'm working with actors, so it depends um, on whom you're working with, and that would be what would be required of you. So giving you a definition, uh, like we said before, I'm always based on that phrase by Mark Blind. I don't know how to define it. If you cut it, it will bleed me. If you cut it, it will, will bleed me. Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, that's what I'm trying to say. I cannot define it, but if you cut it, with a knife it will bleed you so that's how i understand it how i define it i cannot tell you what was my exact function at the time no, no. i like to think of uh, the dramaturg as a person that becomes a, a bridge a bridge between uh, the scenic affair and the other important and fundamental aspect and that is the audience 
the people who are going to watch. That is a definition that I love because this is the one I work with and I believe that it is a way in which you open yourself to society, not only to stay there at the theater building, on the stage, it's actually start a dialogue, starting a dialogue. What happens in all creative processes is very specific, uh, an intimate affair. And sometimes people in the creative teams don't want to share that intimacy. And you understand that because at the end, what you're putting in line uh, at the stage is truly intimate, very delicate and painful. If it's sometimes painful. And it is a way in which you look into the human being and you engage in conversation with the audience. Theater would have no meaning if there were no link with society. And I believe that's what's most important to be this sort of a bridge of mediator of a person that goes between these closed environments that can be a dark theater. This hall is these halls in which many things happen and the creators don't have the opportunity to conceptualize, to review, to reflect upon because their task is yet another to create. So a, a dramaturg is that person, that, that person that connects, connects fiction with uh, reality, that connects reality with fiction. And they are that bridge in which they come and go. This uh, intense dialogue happens that, would is, that should be established because when you open the curtains, maybe you don't see anybody there in the audience. Why? Because they might not be there. And I believe this is one of the uh, efforts that should be made by the dramaturg, you know, telling, guess what? What uh, is of interest to society is not, what, not what's happening here. There's maybe an intense dialogue. There's a need to approach certain topics from theater and not just as a form of thought, but also as a specific place for sensations and affectation feelings. So I believe that, that if there's a person that can work in, in these worlds of communicating both realities, then that would be lovely, ideal. Thank you, Rocio. We will go to the next question. I believe this is for Ana Lola Santana. Now that you have all this experience in working here and in other, so many other places, what are the implications of being a dramaturg in Mexico? I cheated and I had to jot it down because I get nervous. Sorry about that. I'm going to read something to you, but it is five minutes long, okay? The German creator, the country in which dramaturg he was born, defines the work of the dramaturg as a combination of uh, his, his writer and literally counsel in the way in which they develop the vision of a play, and they are also in charge of the repertoire of the company and their publicity. Amongst the responsibilities of the dramaturg is the definition of the programming, uh, asking which plays are to be set up, what would be the logic of the repertoire, what other uh, theaters are going to, other plays are going to happen, how can they be different from other companies to have a specific profile, what are the young authors that you need to pay attention to and how you're going to help your actors in their development and I, and this is okay to me, but it also implies that drama, the dramaturg has an integral work to do when it comes to the scenic arts. And that also implies that you work for an institution or official company that requires these types of tasks to be done. That is a network of theaters with enough funds to be functional that actually need of this particular line of work. I believe that in Mexico, we have yet to get to this place. That does not mean that their existence would not be possible, but the doings of theater are still suffering limits in budgeting, and this affects the professional aspects of a dramaturg. First off, I don't want to be uh, the voice or give a uh, general knowledge as to what it is to be a dramaturg in Mexico. I believe that this is an evolving profession. And as this conference has shown, it will be recognized as an essential figure for national theater. Mexico, even before this is a, was a recognized term, the presence of the dramaturg was sexually tangible, whether he was 
an extra official observer or official one. And I can tell you as my experience that I've had as a dramaturg, which has occurred in a very different way in which the institutionalization of the work has happened. I started my career in the United States at the end uh, of the 90s with an NFA, which is called a Ma Master of Fine Arts Dramaturgy from the University of California, in San Diego. And I recognize that when I started the program, I had no idea as to what a dramaturg would entail. My career then started in the United States, my education. Then I started to work as a dramaturg in Mexican theater, specifically with uh, Claudio Valdez Cori and his company Teatro de Ciertos Habitantes, with whom I continue to work with as of today. This has been quite the privilege that made me work as a dramaturg with other directors in Mexico. However, my main commitment is with the company. My work with certain, with ciertos habitantes implies some of the things that Rabke has talked about, but I am not in charge of the theatrical repertoire or the publicity. What I do, though, is linked to the way in which the company creates theater, which has defined what I do for over the past 20 years. From the get-go, I understood my function as a person in charge of giving context to the world of theater plays to forge a critical link between the artists and the designers and technicians to mediate conversations amongst directors, actors, and designers, and to establish connections between text uh, actors and the audience. Although several, Ciertos Habitantes is a company that is in search of many things focused on a process that would allow the artists to realize of their constant evolution alongside the play. This focus that I had traced for my work is the natural consequence of the methodology of creation by Valdez Puri. The work relationship that was developed required a high level of trust between Puri and myself because we need to maintain the fragile balance that is composed of comprises imagination and the long work of setup through a, also a long period of criticism and study. The work of the company has been based on scenic research with a purpose and finding what human condition is all about through theatrical work. And this implies a long processes of la laboratory process that go over two years that strive for participants to go through several internal external experiences. The reality of this method is that my work as a dramaturg constantly shifts in terms of the necessities of a play at hand. Claudia Vargas uh, takes us through unexpected places in, that are constantly expanding and enriching the definition of my work as a dramaturg. And based on my experience with other directors, I believe that this is exactly what implies to be a dramaturg in Mexico, to expand and to enrich our professional um, endeavors through the search of theatrical expression that it should stain uh, on top regardless of the um, what happens in the country negatively that is who would like to reply to that first off i want to congratulate myself because some of the questions that are coming up would be to me and, and they would actually be similar to whatever you had you have said so there would be no need to repeat myself but this thing related to the conditions of doing dramaturgy in Mexico are not in a way the ideals, the ideal situations and by far not even uh, comparable to those that happen in other countries in which theatrical institutions are actually well created. You said that these are official institutions and I believe that the official aspect should be removed because these are institutions that have worked with all the means they have and they have in a way survived so many tempests and uh, uh, storms that have happened for Mexican projects. I believe that it is extraordinary as well for a company like that of Valdez Curi has had that longevity and provide the opportunity to offer a minimal safety in terms of structure that, it, that they have this notion in mind, but they are the exception to the rule, however, and um, you would have to keep that in mind because they are also part of what causes the volatility that we have been talked about previously. Volatility that we can definitely enjoy 
because it is enjoyable. Everybody explains some, some form of enjoyment out of it. And in the end, what I do or not do as a part of that specific area of dramaturgy in this area can also be enjoyable. But how can you uh, lever up the structure in such a way that it actually fits the way in which it should fit to make sure that uh, things actually happen? And that is the expansion of the consciousness of your participation, but also the practical results that also generate other synergy so that our theater can uh, become what we have uh, dreamed of for so long. Again, I, I congratulate myself on the fact that this is very clear, uh, as clear as water can be. So have uh, some time, should anybody would like to talk. And now when it comes to working as a dramaturg in Mexico, it is common that the people that work in theater also work in other type of media and television and radio and films or what have you. So for me, it has been a very interesting experiment to, to become uh, as a cover up, make a cover up uh, work uh, as a dramaturg because the work, because the word is just so close to theater, right? So. So it becomes a bit more complicated to come in with bearing the title. But what's interesting of this matter, however, is that it won't generate the need of, uh, make, of, of generating the work that we do, but it forces the teams to discover this type of work through doing things. And in this creative process, whether you're doing a, a content counseling for Netflix, for instance, or another project that uh, could be a lot more multimedia in nature that would be not a play per se, even though it is, but as an immersive experience, if you will, which theater is, is anyway. But in a way, uh, it tells you how you do the dramaturgy work, as I described it here, without actually naming it like that. And the teams themselves, as individuals, start to discover that endeavor is something that is actually happening so they say well this this happened and i didn't in, never in these processes we had this or this types of conversations so there's always a process of doing cover-up work and you know and na of naming things the way they should be named so have uh, the name dramaturge there that is a part that is a process and that is usually the battle that we have and in my experience it has been specifically that to become to do cover up uh, work you know because sometimes that's what theater does for you anyway it is necessary also in other spaces however in mexico and other spaces of creation not only in the scenic arts thank you Ma. we still have a minute to go Anybody else would like to make the most of that minute? But not that I think as if drama tragedy would be a, a performative act in which you have to do things to make sure that they actually happen, and otherwise it wouldn't exist until it's done and it disappears once it happens. So that I believe it is very interesting that in a room filled with philosophers, dramaturg be the uh, dramaturg slash actor component. And I also think it's very interesting because when we've talked to, about this with everybody, who is a dramaturg, who is not, I think the experience of going undercover, perhaps I will do that tomorrow. Great, Brenda, we'll look forward to that. Next question, and in effect, it is for Alfredo Michel. And let me tell you first that each one of these questions emerged from the episodes of Puentes, Bridges, in which they have been guests, guest speakers for. So if you want to look into these topics more, delve into it, look into LMDA under Puentes, and you'll see some of the videos there. So Alfredo, here's your question. The behavior of a dramaturg, who, how, when, why, 
can a person become a dramaturg in Mexico? Regarding the behavior of a dramaturg, I think this has to do with the Puentes program. <clears throat> in addition, there is a visual aspect that has to be taken into account here. And that reflects a cultural aspect in turn, in turn of this profession and our place in uh, here. But there is there is something else that draws our attention. And I say this because in effect, I am the eldest here amongst us. And what this means here is that there is an experience. This is not undercovered uh, dramaturgy, but rather unknown. That is, that has not been identified as such, nonetheless was occurring, perhaps in my biographic notes. And here we would look at a translator for the stage and dramaturg. It would appear that this is partial because the effect here is that in my own interventions in the same areas, the total un incomprehensible work of a dramaturg, I've done this, I've done that, I've done the other. Um, without ever saying this, I've given you an example, and this became, became a reality when I was the professor of a specific course, and this, when it came back to me, and um, I have gotten closer, and I insist, in partial manner, this characterizes what I have done, primarily in an area that is very specific and also um, contrasts with other aspects when Ana Lola was talking about the origin of the word, etc., entails textual management, which the management of the text that becomes diluted into other areas and other ways of delving into the theatrical um, processes. Primarily, I have also approached it from the side of translation of text, particularly from English into Spanish and specifically Shakespeare, which have ended up constituting a certain awareness with those whom I'm working with of the need and existence of this figure. This has been gradual. I began with X, Y, Z, and they said, what do you have for us? Well, I'll turn over the production, but very likely you're going to need something else. And that is for me to say why, how, when, where, what's happening, where do you, where is it coming from? Because you're going to be facing things that if you look at them, it might be the result of something that continues to operate very firmly in our environment. And that is authoritarianism, verticality, centralism of processes. When a director, of one of these people says, tomorrow I'm going to close the door for the practice room, rehearsal room, they do it. Something like that happened to me. In general, I don't work with people like that. And I've been fortunate enough to be able to have very good relationships with, whom I'm, with those whom I'm working with and have doors open for me. And uh, what assuredly we all know must be, and uh, there are other experiences here, and that is on the one hand, the behavior that then leads to the next, who, how, when, where, why. I think that there is another aspect here that we must look at. 
We have to consolidate ways of education in theatrical environments that will create awareness for those who are arriving and are curious. Where I work now, I worked in the English literature department, but now I work in the theatrical uh, literature department. And there is a beginning, a sketch, perhaps, an outline of education in this regard through uh, theater courses. But what they need is to be fine-tuned. They need to be reworked. We need to perfect many of these activities so that they can do away with this authoritarian, central, vertical mandate here so that when students want to come into this process and in the past they have been rejected, um, the dramaturg says, look, it, you go get the coffee. That's what you're going to be doing here. This is true, a true story. And from that moment on, you realize that a lot has to be done to change this. And on the other hand, there's what I was also saying. How do we resolve the financial issue and stability issues of Mexican productions? Let's not call them companies, just production. In present day circumstances, what we cannot do is reject them, do away with them, nor can we reject the old patterns and I think I have run out of time. Thank you, Alfredo. Five minutes for a rebuttal. Who would like to reply here? I have something I want to say very briefly. The question makes me think of the fact that we can catalog who can be a dramaturg and who cannot. I don't know why we think that why we think there's a list of characteristics that have to be meant to be a dra dramaturg. But what Lola and Alfredo said regarding education, the lack of safe places, this, this is true of the theater environment here. There is no safe place for anyone here in theater. But something that has granted some stability for me is that precisely because of this type of reaction that Alfredo is talking about, with young people, it is the young people who are driving these ideas. They seek other sources of work. Um, the table that is closing today is Bruno's, and there you can see what the young people are doing. Something else that I note is that, at least in Latin America, it is women uh, dramaturgs who are driving this activity of uh, dramaturgy. Does anybody have anything else to add? I have something I will add. It's like the chicken and the egg. If you're saying that there is no safe place to produce theater in Mexico, neither for producers nor actors, I do believe and I have faith that dramaturgs create these spaces. So perhaps they don't exist and it would appear that there is no room for a dramaturg, but when a dramaturg does arrive and wreaks magic, we can create safe places. So if we look at that first undercover entrance here, that's a question for the audience as well. I think that something important here, and what I would like to add is that we began working without this preconception. So many of us started doing things that now, in due time, we find that can be conceived of as dramaturgy. But the fact that we didn't have from the onset this concept in place gave us a lot of freedom. So I really like the idea that this event is called Without Borders, because I think that is the place from where we are operating, without borders, or with borders, but crossing borders. And this has to do with what you just said, Brenda. We're constantly 
constantly expanding, taking it further, proposing other ways of doing things. In this regard, I think that we are inventing and writing our own dramaturgy of the term in Mexico. We haven't finished, and that's a good thing, because that gives us a chance to constantly improve, to keep it alive, dynamic, to redesign it, rework it, tailor it, render it subjective where needed, and that is of the essence. We had a talk with the young people from uh, dramaturgy rebellion with Jose and Bruno and when I was looking at the images here of Fuentes these uh, bridges the name of these this program it has to do with art and stage in the 21st century but there is something that reminds of reminds us of the codexes and of the Malinche and our Aztec roots, that indigenous woman who became the translator between the original peoples, the indigenous groups, and the world of the Spanish conquerors. And with her ease of mastering languages, she became that bridge, that translator. And that is how I think, and I'm throwing this out there, because I think it's a very provocative proposal and very entertaining to think that she has been our very first uh, dramaturg. And as a Mexican, this woman who brings two cultures into touch through language, through translation, who knows how to read and understand what's happening on one side and adapt it to the context. For many years, this figure, this person, the Malinche, was um, misconceived and misthought of. But even at this historic level today, we now find that she is a very valuable personality. And from here, I think of her as that first dramaturg. And um, she had the possibility of bringing together two wor worlds. Okay, so if we were to bring uh, La Malinche to this day and age, quite definitely, she wouldn't be playing that role of just being a translator of a language. We, she would be a translator of cultures, a translator of languages in the broadest sense of the term. I find that fascinating. And that is why we believe that dramaturgy in this country is just now being invented every single day. And insofar as this keeps happening, it is a sign of life. Thank you, Rocio. Ana Olga, do you have something to add? Ana Lola, yes. Next question is for Lourdes Guzman. Lourdes, which do you think is the work of the dramaturg in production processes? What does the dramaturg do in Mexico? That's good. I'm glad that you have said Mexico because that's the only place I know anything about. Well, I think that although my experience isn't that new, I think that um, it is shorter than that of other companies present here today. But in my experience, this entails preparation. This isn't something that you can improvise. This isn't something that somebody with goodwill can undertake. And of course, you can, but it doesn't stop there, goodwill. I think it's also important to recognize the preparation required in order to carry out the work. The flexibility, which has also been mentioned, because in each case, something different is going to occur. You need different things in place, depending on each work, each production, each place and time. But let me go back to something specifically mentioned by Ana Lola, and I believe that it is relevant, and that is trust. We can achieve nothing without trust. The scope of what we can do would be very limited if we didn't have trust in our work team, if we didn't have 
the chance to keep doors open, to have a voice that can be heard and make certain decisions. I also think about flexibility without a doubt. Respect comes into play and expressed in many different ways. One might be pay, the, the way in which we value our work, and make sure that it is not just something that we do out of love and in good faith and goodwill, but that we may be able to support ourselves. I think dramaturgy needs to, to be grounded much more firmly in Mexico. I think that we have taken strides toward this, uh, very clear strides. And there is more to be done yet, but I think that part of what is imperative here is that we not be mysterious. We need to render the work visible. We need to be open. We need to adjust. And in addition, we have to be very willing. I also think that this is uh, entails generosity, willingness, but also important is that it be mutual. Let me add something that perhaps isn't, doesn't prop up very often, but very important. I think everything that I've heard is impressive, but at the same time, I think it's extraordinarily fun and entertaining. I think that there is curiosity all the time here um, that was also present in the Dramaturgy Rebellion and in our a school in drama and theater, and this curiosity that I think is a shared trait. Without curiosity, we would be unable to have this source of questions that drives us to imagine exactly what is happening, not just here, but also on the other side and in the middle. What are the dialogues that are possible to embark on? I'm not sure how much longer I have. 48 seconds. Very good. Let me finish then. So overall, I think that rendering this visible, what, it, what we're doing, has been very clearly stated with all of us present here today. And it's important to talk about variety. Alfredo mentioned it a moment ago. I marvel at the possibility of being able to convene here with people who are from generations that are, have come before mine, with people who are my generation, with younger people, and with different perspectives from Mexico, from abroad, and many different possibilities out there, and many, many prospects. For example, I remember, Rocio, you have also emphasized philosophy, and I think that this is fundamental support, because what we have in common here is asking questions. And ultimately, I think it's imperative to recognize that this is teamwork always. We would never be able to conceive of dramaturgy carried out alone. Thank you, Lourdes. I want to answer what Lourdes has said because I want us to add more to that concept of trust. In my experience, with students and how we enter into these creative spaces without being set just to go and get the coffee. At the end of the day, since my process, the creative process, is vulnerable. Everybody's creative process is vulnerable because creation is uh, opening up and becoming vulnerable in order to expand. So I think trust is of the essence. I very often recommend that we must work 
as dramaturgs with people who already trust us. Part of stem from the basis of your relationships, healthy, open relationships based on trust. Perhaps there, then you can establish a relationship as a director or, or a dramaturg. And trust for me is like what Alfredo said. There are hierarchies, there are ways of working that are very closed. And sometimes then we must say, what does it entail to open something up? The key was lost. There's nowhere to go in and open it up. The key has been lost. And when you have the privilege of working with whom you work well with, that is marvelous. The question arises in terms of our teaching and our preparation. How do we teach trust? Is it something that you teach? How is it taught and to whom? It is based on this that everything else will transpire. And once that door of trust is opened up for the dramaturg, it becomes the greatest trust. The person that you most trust is the dramaturg, the person to whom you can ask anything of. With that person, you have full trust. And I'm throwing this out there, uh, that trust, where, when, how, how, why, is a starting point that is of the utmost importance, particularly in the context of how we teach and how we are trained and raised up in this world. Could, could I add something? Yes. What you have said is very interesting regarding education, the education process, because I do think that on one side, dramaturgs must have a level of training. You have to have education and training. But there's another process of educating around our work. And here, in an anecdotal manner, let me tell you the following. I was asked the Cambridge Encyclopedia of Stage Directors asked me to produce the section on Mexico. So I interviewed many directors, many producers, and um, a lot of these a lot of what happened was that it, it was hard to get in touch with them. I had to do some name dropping and I'd have to uh, tell them who I was and try to get them to answer my calls. What happened was that the first question is, you're what? What do you do? Who are you? So I had to explain what my work was, who I was, and two jobs came out for me from that experience. Um, as a dramaturg, they were fascinated by the idea that such a profession existed when I told them what it was I did. So this is something that we have to foster. We must write articles on what uh, dramaturgy involves. We have to educate. And what you said, Gabriel, the new generations recognize this, but we have a whole lifetime behind us of people who have no clue of who we are nor what our work is. And it's wonderful to be able to teach them now that we exist for a reason and that we can make your life easier than you in ways that you never dreamed of by executing this process. Thank you, Ana Lola. I don't really have a reply here, but I want to add my voice to something. And I don't think that the following has been said enough or it hasn't been as clear as it could be. And that is that a dramaturg always takes care of the integral process. That means explaining to others what you do over and over again, but also to awaken that trust and be there in the present, in the moment, listening and taking care of those who are on the other side. And that is something that means to work shoulder to shoulder with your whole heart and mind is something that is taking place right then and there. That was my reply. Next question, and it's for Gabriela Aparicio. 
What does the work of the dramaturg contribute to other areas within a production? Um, I get really excited and passionate and forget the time, so keep track of it, please. This question opens up many doors here, because I think of all that has been said, we can't just say that a dramaturg does one given thing. We do thousands of things. We could have a whole discussion on the work of the dramaturg with the uh, designer, with the actor, with the producer, with the director, with everyone, different roles we play. But to answer the question, one thing is the process of working side by side with the process, in the process, finding a path. We're always there to direct and in the best and move and reaffirm, encourage, be a presence, and also help to resolve crises. All processes need someone to do that. And I think in major terms, that's what it is. To give you some Easy examples, working with the director perhaps, is to reaffirm the idea, reminding them what they are doing, because sometimes they forget. And uh, sustaining these conversations as a dramaturg, uh, expressing your ideas and making sure that someone is listening and uh, working with design entails many different things. So perhaps uh, regarding research, Taking care of the, of the aesthetic part of it, colors, textures, uh, everything that has to be harmonized. And in terms of acting, triggering things through my investigation, through my proposals, foster something in somebody else. And this produces something very interesting for the actor. And I also feel like this is a, a great frustration. And um, perhaps then I'm no longer rendered visible. All of these conversations that everybody has been talking about, sometimes you become invisible because you see the results. You see the results of the producer, the designer, the director, but not of the dramaturg's work. So sometimes in Mexico, then, this dialogue and the trust and what Marta has pointed out, I think that in these processes in Mexican theater, this is what we need. It would have to be through listening and learning about the unknown part. It's process with the dramaturg, with the director, but not with other areas. This is something that uh, happened with Patti too. And that dialogue would have to help us find meaning here. And this is what um, the non-unification here, maybe non-harmonizing the directors on one tack, the designer on another. The dramaturg can also be a mediator, can harmonize. It's not just that we are thinking about a personal or individual vision, but rather that um, I think that that is precisely uh, what Ana Lola mentioned, that this is what we know as being important and necessary, a comprehensive vision, not just uh, one that we're throwing up in the air here. So precisely, I think that it's important to study the dialogue. There are other dramaturgs that say, look, I, I can't approach the director. I can't approach the actor. What do you mean you can't approach them? It's not forbidden. The dramaturg uh, is not some evil presence here. So we are all important players in a package here. And we are all working toward this one goal. And this is for something that is comprehensive in creativity, not just individually. And so we must forge ahead. Thank you, Gabi. You would like to reply to that? When I listen to you, Gabi, I start thinking of this a matter that has to do with the companionship that you offer. Because 
in uh, scenic arts, you always have uh, teamwork. You always need the cooperation of others, and you do that for others as well. So that entails companionship. But I believe that a very important step would be to be partners with each other as dramaturgs. Because here we don't find something that would be amazing to have, that is, to have in a production more than just one dramaturg. That would make, that would ensure that all productions on all Mason Sen would be enriched, will be better, especially when it comes to asking questions. I believe that this is also a very human aspect of facing things as a team, press on ahead, you know, even the enjoyable parts of it all, you know, ha knowing that things are happening as it should be happening. But also when we have a crisis, when we nobody knows what's going to happen, when uh, people look at the work plan and it looks as if it were written in Greek, and everything becomes confusing and you have to make decisions for that. I believe that an indispensable part of it all, of our work, and that for me, it results quite gratifying is feeling that, that I have a partners in crime, if you will, working with me, hand in hand. I feel emboldened, protected, and safe and certain too that things will actually happen because I am working with my team and I believe that this companionship of sorts has very important aspects that we can appreciate and harness for our benefit. These are all practical matters. From everything that has been said, I believe we can um, see a few needs. When we talk about, you know, dramaturgs doing things, well, it would be necessary to establish practical objectives and a vision, objectives that could, in a way, even strive for a form of legislation. What I'm trying to say is that when I was mentioning that the diversity of tasks that we perform, well, I thought to myself, the last time I, I delivered a specific translation, adaptation, or production, well, I did the companionship work, I did the counselor counseling, I was also a director, and I did translation and the proofreading. So I'm contributing so that the task in and of itself is unfortunately not being recognized. So what happens? Well, there is no structure support structure that would be enough for you to tell you, well, this is the limit of your tasks. And when you cross that limit, then you have to call yourself something different. Why? Because unfortunately, theaters in Mexico, and especially in companies in Mexico, offer terrible contracts. Legi the legislation is just terrible. So the other objective that I can think of is that we need to find a paradigm shift, something that has to happen from the core, from the education of those people that want to find these spaces for the Mexican theater, telling these people that we do have a cultural baggage that you need to study, that you need to build up a career, that you have no different processes and productions, but also trying to change the paradigms upward, you know, that, that ver vertical um, nature of things that we have explored. We were talking about creating bridges and doors and keys, and I believe that the main key is to change the paradigms, mental paradigms of directors, which is something that has existed in Mexico ever since they started working here a long time ago. We have this idea that the director is this omnipotent, nimodal figure, and now people are understanding things differently. Even the youngsters are doing things differently. And however, we have yet to find a cohesion, and I hope I live long enough to see the change. 
I do believe the future will be good, but the present has things that need to be tackled first. Well, let's go to the next question with, with our next uh, panelist. I believe that this is linked directly to the replies that we have been seeing on this last question. What can society do to, to the art to our community and what can dramaturgy give to society? Well, first of this link of uh, making sure that the arts that theater have the place that it should be having and things that unfortunately are left to the wayside, especially when we consider budgeting. Usually, um, health care or social benefits, they usually go first. And it looks as if arts was just an ancillary to budgeting, that it is just the last, last place you need to explore. And I don't believe that is the case. When we had a conversation with the Puentes uh, panel, the last time we understood that art are fundamental. Why? Because otherwise, we would think only of preserving biological life, that is, the life that you see in a plant or an animal. And they are important, don't get me wrong, like that of a human being. But human beings have something that is different, that has to do with a sensitivity, with the, the feeling that you have the possibility of symbology in a symbological manner, create yourself. And this is where art comes in. And if we are not going to be just plants or just animals, and if we do not want to be reduced to a simple form of biological life, we need art to understand the pain that society goes through. And in this sense, in this country, like many others, around the world, but specifically as we focus on Mexico and maybe to Latin America as well, we have uh, gone through very difficult contexts that have been hard involved in violence, a social asymmetry that has been very pronounced. To reduce the life of people to whether they are expendable or not, is just wrong and art doesn't do that what we need to think of is that that is exactly what we provide that great differential and from the, the task of the dramaturg themselves we say that we need to center and give visibility to the very important task that is everything that happens in art it is not an ancillary issue it is something that is actually vital what we are put into play is the mental health of our population not just the physical well-being but actually mental health and equilibrium the possibility of thinking of this symbol of understanding that in on the stage you have maybe hamlet and on the stage from one moment to another it can be a castle and then it turns into a desert or a jungle this possibility that is brought about of through moving with this flexibility is extremely important and in order to conclude not to take too much of your time we have to think of the other and i believe this is fundamental this is the work of the dramaturg to think on not only that everything that happens on stage matters, it is not just a field in which the artists work in, but that our raison d'être has to do with the consideration of others. I put a very practical example that is actually very simple. And that is that one of our peers was telling me that it would be very difficult to read theater, and I told him that's not the case. I believe it is even harder to read philosophy. I'm going to tell you what the difficulty of reading theater is. It's, that is that in one line you will be a criminal, and in the next line you will be the victim. And how do you move through this flexibility of putting yourself in the shoes of one person or the other? And I believe that that place is fundamental, and that is something that only art give you from this place you can feel the pain of others you can feel that you can do more for them and from this 
place to find all these connections. And through uh, going through these borders that have to do with the specific locations in which theater happens and, and this hierarchy of theater that whether you have a, a cult, um, cult like theater or maybe public theater, this paradigm shift that had been uh, pointed out by Alfredo are fundamental to understand that how see that these structures work and see where those loopholes in which we can engage into directly and create connections with. That would be fundamental to me. Thank you, Rocio. I would like to add to that. I honestly, what I what you said completely moved me. This question of whether you are uh, getting out of the cultural sector and understanding what is our place in the world. And I hear you and I say to myself, exactly that, where do we find empathy? Where do we develop our emotional intelligence and develop that sensitivity? In some sense, we see the decision makers, uh, those who do uh, public policies. And I believe that could be a faraway example, but it's actually quite close. Like for instance, when the FIFA was uh, sanctioning the Mexican team for uh, engaging in homophobic um, cheering. And you see all the people involved in FIFA having these types of conversations and at an abstract level. And what they don't understand is that you or where you are as a collective, where do you see these spaces of empathy? Where do you see these spaces of knowing where this violence might come from, this learned and uh, performed violence that happens in public places or our stadiums? Are we going to create official and public policies just to tackle that? We can do whatever you want. All the social sciences and natural sciences can be there. But if we do not understand our existence in terms of consciousness, of awareness, of our of our own intelligence and spirit and effective intelligence, then it will be impossible for all these things to change from um, from the root. And this is why when you see that things are actually vital. This is the space, the physical space in which these things happen, in which this creative dialogue actually happens. And for me, listening to you made it very clear to me that role that we're performing is very clear and we as dramaturgs we are the people who create this connection when we forget we have the team the space and this is what we're doing and we uh, find ourselves in a rather ample spectrum yes. this is just uh, um it is very true. We need to have this view from the outside inward and impact ourselves, but it usually starts from home. The dramaturg has this very important first responsibility to change from within, to enact change from within. I'll give you just an anecdote. A director, let's say, and I deliver the product. I am uh, very happy with the text. And then uh, the director brings it back to me, you know, maybe a, a week later through email, and he butchered the whole thing. And I tell him, well, oh, what are you doing? And then he tells me, if I were not to appropriate myself of this text, then I can't do anything to do it with it. And I tell him, well, you can't appropriate yourself with things you don't understand. And then we engage in a very important conversation, and I tell him, well, you know what? Let's discuss this in a while eating in a meal. You have to understand this is not the case. Why? Because you don't know what we're talking about. Even and that is one of the very first experiences in which you tell yourself, "Well, your authority is not over my own authority." And what you're trying to do with this text and present that to the public, then that would uh, that would finish. That would be the finishing touch to a project that. I generated alongside an actress, and this is a part of my work as a dramaturg that is actually not a dramaturg, and to offer to the audience something that would be of lower quality. You understood that, and that was one of the best uh, plays in which I have participated, but you have to strike first. 
you know, strike the iron while it's hot. And uh, this is a, a play that was actually very good, that was uh, made for women and that would shed light into the con female condition because every women that talked about their experience in this space were very happy to participate in a project that would have been different had I allowed the director to do his pleasing. So this is why change has to happen from within. The dramaturg has to be prepared to exert authority at the level in which they need it. Yeah, that was very precise. Bueno, vamos con let's go with our last uh, question of the day and uh, has been working uh, quite a lot to make sure that LMDA Mexico actually happens to find each other here and uh, we have uh, mentioned a lot many things on what is still missing to do but Brenda this question for you, what what is still missing to do in Mexico? I believe that is the hardest question of them all. I have been taking a few talks like any good dramaturg would have done by listening to their colleagues and teachers. And I believe that what Lourdes has been saying regarding this companionship nature affair is something that is important to uh, remember, especially when I think that we talked about when we were having a dialogue with Quintus, you know, you have to, in a couple of dramaturgs, being part of a particular project, we talked about these affairs. And I believe that we are going in the right direction. We're still, you know, loading, if you will. But two, you have to study the structures. I don't know exactly how to do that, but we have the freedom to help us with that. So what do we need to do in Mexico? What is still missing? I have no certain answer, but I believe that what's missing is exactly this. No teamwork, collaboration to embrace each other, to talk to the people. Yes, of course, we have to call each other by name to file things and record them, you know, to let people know that the work of a dramaturg actually happened because sometimes you don't, you can't even tell that it happened, but it's actually there, you know, so that the people on the front line can actually see that. You know, for things to happen really well, you see that there is a background work. Sometimes you see these uh, credits in a program that has to happen and happen every time so that you can see that work has been done. Conversation, collaboration, naming each other, recording, uh, call each other by name. And I believe, I, I, I look at you because I don't know exactly what needs to happen. We are, this is something that we're discovering together. We need to keep uh, uh, asking questions. You have to uh, look into uh, the Puentes program because it provides a one-on-one -on -one as to what dramaturgy is all about. And I have no idea, honestly, I, please help me, dramaturg colleagues, you fellow dramaturgs, please help me with this. To create a, a, an a individual vision, because sometimes we see the United States and Germany and other places in which we do not find ourselves, and I believe that a very important thing that has been happening is recognizing how the processes that have been happening here, recognizing that we don't have the optimal conditions for work, career, and for education, that regardless of this, we're engaging in dialogue to make sure that it actually happens and that there is a clear vision as to how you can empower your uh, the dramaturg in Mexico and something that I talk with Rocio all the time about is alighting our thoughts and put them into papers because we do not have a bridges per se. One of the many pro problems that I find when I'm doing my workshops, especially focused in the work of the dramaturg, is that I usually don't have sources. You know, I can tell you all well, read Lessing or read whoever, whoever. You don't have a specifically 
a person, you, know, you can say, Le, reader Endira, Marta, um, Rocio, it is quite strange that we have yet to generate our own sources to engage in dialogue from our own thoughts. You know, we have to make sure that things are being brought to paper and stop thinking of what is happening in other countries. Of course, we can use them as a reference, but we need to question them and use ourselves as a reference as well. I don't know if that helps. Yes, it does help. I believe that what will make a dramaturgy great in Mexico is something that will happen specifically in Mexico. You cannot you know, just grab something from elsewhere and cut it and paste it here in Mexico. Or maybe, yes, that can happen. But we have to strive to do that in Mexico for Mexico and to keep this conversation open. You know, that is very necessary feedback. And although although we don't have uh, bibliography, at least uh, Mexico, we have your own work, the work by, done by Eri, by Ana Lola, by Alfredo, by Lourdes, by everybody. It's going to be uh, recorded. This will be recorded so you can go back to it as you please. But going back to what you said on Lessing, well, it's there. It is uh, there, of course. It's, and we can't say that we're not going to look into it because we do things different in Mexico. That would be foolish of us. We believe that we have to take from everywhere in order to achieve that. Now that you've mentioned Lessing, I say that because every time i ask uh, uh, somebody knows who lessing is they usually go what who is that and that uh, makes me a bit angsty as to well we know exactly what a drama is but if we do not know the origins of it then we're lost i don't know if you, when you were studying at the university did you ever uh, listen to your uh, teachers saying well who's lessing i never really had that experience and i believe that this is also an important thing, how a document from centuries ago has yet to be touched upon. And coming from that, the very first translation into Spanish from uh, the Hamburg dramaturgy in Mexico actually happened in 1997. And these are centuries that were never truly explored. So we have to reappropriate that. And I'm sorry if we're taking a uh, whole microphone, but I believe the translations are, are also very important in finding it correct translation is yet another uh, field. You, you should translate dramaturg into playwright, for instance, so there is no actual clarity as to the what the terminology entails. That unfortunately makes me think of a problem of uh, very large volumes, that is the deficiencies that we find in education in our country. Because if uh, Mohammed doesn't go to the mountain. If the mountain doesn't go to, to Mohammed, then the mountain goes to the, the Mohammed goes to the mountain. You know, why? Because we do not have sufficient linguistic education. We do sometimes we don't even have access to other languages, which is a fundamental aspect for education at every level and for every profession. And this is not just about theater and dramaturgy. I believe strongly that an engineer a certain repute has to have access to these types of texts. And in our university, the problems that we have are not only deficient, but also very ill-conceived. They only work to make sure that you can answer maybe an, uh, an exam and that's it, a test, and that's it, that you can take a test. And this is the work that we need to do from the base of the pyramid. This is a deficiency that happens specifically for those who want to be part of these aspects because the bibliography in the end uh, is actually quite large. There's a lot of sources of information. There are books out there. And uh, usually when I have my students with me, now that I, this is the second year of teaching that I have, I usually give all these texts to my students. Why? Because they were part of the English department and it turns out that 80% of my students have no access to that or they feel a little weak when it comes to engaging into it. We have to create bridges. That is, people that might help those that can't access it, they have to provide that access to them, create these connections and so that you can come in to learn. However, through the pandemic, this has been made a little harder, but you have to be ingenious about it. So the deficiencies from the base up, unfortunately, has is something that we have 
we catch on to and has to do with what Rocio was mentioning as part of our task. Um, if you want to contribute to this, you will do that. We'll do so. And I want to mention that it, this is also a process that is still very insignificant because we have Marta, who is in the translation process of Michael Chambers' book, that is going to be released in the Nokia editorial. And that I believe that that's also important because if the book of Michael Chambers, which is a, a basic text in the state for the work of the dramaturg, is not known here, well, I believe that. Marta, another Mexican dramaturg, is not only translating it, but they're also remaking that for a Mexican context. And I believe these are contexts that are actually happening. And it is also important, as I said, to publish many things. We have a wonderful uh, theater a magazine. In Mexico, you can uh, describe what we do. We actually wrote an article together, Mauricio and myself, um, we talked about our working relationship when we uh, you know, produce the play. So we have to force it in a way because it is important to make sure that this is understood and that there's an example out there of what the things are actually happening. But all in all, I want to thank Marta for what you're doing. And in this sense, I want to question the premise of the question because the word a lack is something that we're missing is something that we're actually really bereft of or that this is a deficiency an actual deficiency and i believe that part of what truly really, makes me think of what gabi is saying is that we do not need to compare ourselves to others and i believe that other every process is that the dramaturg in mexico is exactly what the dramaturg in mexico has to be today and we're not going to stand still because you never are supposed to stand still. So it, we're exactly, we're supposed to enact movement and go further than just thinking of our lacks or the things we are bereft of. You know, you, what Alfredo was saying is the access to different languages and accent, and for me, translating this, you know, having a course in dramaturg and theater faculty would mean that they, I would give a bibliography to the students that had no access to it and we need to fix that problem not only in my translation but also in the classroom and we work like this i ask the people who has access to the text well, one of you will read the other will translate and the other person will do something new with the text even though they don't have access to it directly so, and that's okay we always have uh, these uh, bridges that we can form and this profile that is being given to us of those of us who have the privilege of accessing other languages. We sometimes forget or we uh, take it for granted or, uh, or we even uh, uh, sidestep ourselves with how we feel linguistically speaking with ourselves. And sometimes we don't listen to what we're saying, you know, if you think things from a different perspective and engaging in a dialogue with that, Maybe things might change. So for me, my translation, my translation, the person I trust the most when checking my translation is somebody that has no access into the target language because there will be the person that will detect something that it hits the ear wrong and that doesn't sound correct, you know, and saying that there is um, something missing or that there is a lack of, of something makes me sad instead of saying well we as a collective where are we heading or where should we head for and we are find ourselves in this process we're never too old or never too young or never too this or that and want to make sure that this part is conveyed because i get excited about it i don't want to give you this idea of that being bereft of something we live in a world of such abundance and I want to no longer have that idea of being bereft of things and put ourselves in this perspective of abundance. Thank you for this lesson in dramaturgy. Thank you. Okay. Um, it's my turn now to be the dramaturg and tell you 
that we are out of time. I have so enjoyed this. Um, inhabiting and sharing this space with you has been so great. We can continue our talk outside of here. So let's do away with the border. Let's make sure that our conversation can be ongoing for those who are present here, for those who are on the other side of the screen as well. We have hashtags, we have websites, we have a lot of channels through which we can communicate one with another. And I have to recognize that I was very fortunate and I had a wonderful teacher who is always present in my mind and heart. Um, when, whenever Marta Turis, who isn't here right now, but who is in episode number one of Puentes, if you have a chance, uh, take a look at it. And um, if you want to continue this conversation, go to the Puentes website. Thank you, each and every one of you. We thank you.